This story is called The Fly on the Ceiling, a math myth. It was put together by Dr. Julie Glass and was illustrated by Richard Waltz. And the two of these people have taken a true fact and wrapped a little bit of fiction around it to make it fun for children to learn. If you are a child who happens to live in Paris, maybe the Montmartre district, this would be a great story for you. But if you live in Paris, Texas, it would be a good story for you too. This is the story of a guy who lived a long time ago. He lived in France. He was a French guy, so he had a French name. His name was René Descartes. Americans would say René Descartes. This may sound like a funny name to you, but in France it is perfectly normal. René was a philosopher. A philosopher is someone who thinks about why things are the way they are. René was a great philosopher. Many of his ideas are still famous today. I think, therefore I am. I think. Cogito ergo sum. That's the way he wrote that in Latin. But even though René was a great philosopher, he did have one problem. He was messy. The problem started out small, but it got bigger and bigger. The funny thing was, René did not know he had a problem until he started to lose things. His notebook, his favorite hat, his book about stars, his inkwell. Then he found the inkwell. Whoa. Now René knew he had a problem. This must stop, René said to himself. He decided to take a walk and try to think of a solution to his problem. It took him a moment to find his coat, his hat, and the front door. René went to his favorite bakery, Boulangerie, to buy a fresh loaf of bread. Then he headed to his favorite place to think, the banks of the river Seine. René ate some of the bread, mmm, while he walked. He looked at the water and wondered how he could keep better track of his things. Night fell, and René was still thinking. He was thinking so hard that he didn't look where he was going. Splash! Into the Seine went René Descartes. When he was fished out of the water, he was cold and wet, and his bread was soggy. René walked home. By the time he got there, he was <laughs> sneezing and <laughs> wheezing. He crawled into bed oh, and fell fast asleep. <laughs> the next morning, René still felt awful, dreadful. Not only that, but he couldn't find a handkerchief or an extra blanket or the logs to make a fire. He couldn't even find his soggy bread, which should have been dried out by then. René crawled, sadly, back into bed. He stared at his ceiling. The ceiling was the only place in his room that wasn't messy. René wished that he lived on the neat ceiling instead of on the messy floor. Just then, he noticed a fly on the ceiling. The fly flew off and landed near one corner. Then it flew off and landed in another corner. Then it landed above René's toes. Then it stopped right over René's head. René started to think. He wondered if the fly ever landed in the same place twice. This might seem like a weird thing to think about, but René was a philosopher, so it was normal for him. I need to record where the fly lands so I can know how many times it lands in the same place, he thought. But how can I do that? René thought and thought. Suddenly he had a brilliant idea. It was so brilliant that he jumped out of bed and did a little jig. He knew how to record exactly where the fly landed on the ceiling. René took a piece of charcoal from the fire. Then he climbed up on a chair and started drawing lines on the ceiling. 
Don't try this at home. Your parents won't like it. First, Rene drew lines from the north wall to the south wall. Next, he drew lines from one side to the other. Then he numbered the lines along two of the walls. After that, he got back into bed. Rene watched the fly in the ceiling. When it landed, he counted the lines over to that spot. He wrote down the number of lines, two. Then he counted the lines up to that spot. He wrote down the number, five. Together, the two numbers, two and five, told him exactly where the fly was. The numbers two and five are called coordinates. The first coordinate, 2, measures how far away the fly is from the left side. The second coordinate, 5, measures how far away the fly is from the bottom wall. Rene spent the whole morning watching the fly and <coughs> sneezing. If you had gone to visit him, he might have said, the fly is 6 over 3 up. Or, the fly is 4 over, 7 up. Or, the fly is 8 over, 1 up. And those coordinates would have been 6, 3, 4, 7, or 8, 1. Every spot on the ceiling had its own set of coordinates. Recording the coordinates of the fly over and over again gave Rene another brilliant idea. Maybe... He could keep track of his stuff the same way he kept track of the fly. It would be even easier because a hat can't get up and fly away. Zut alors! René jumped up out of bed again. He pushed everything into the kitchen. Now the floor of his room was as clean as his ceiling. But he couldn't draw the grid on the floor with charcoal. It would rub off too soon. René went next door to see if his neighbor had any paint. What luck! His neighbor was a painter. Rene and the painter painted a grid on Rene's floor. Then they went to the bakery to buy bread. By the time they got back, the paint had dried. The painter helped Rene put his things in place on the grid. They found Rene's hat, his star book, his quill pens, his old boots, his journal from when he was ten, and many other things that René didn't even know were missing. On a chart, René carefully recorded where everything went. Et voilà! After that, René's home was never messy again. Well, hardly ever. Rene's system caught on around the world. It was named the Cartesian Coordinate System. Cartesian comes from Rene's last name, Descartes. Today, people still use the Cartesian Coordinate System in many different ways. Author Julie Glass gives us a little note at the end of this book. She says, Okay, so maybe Rene Descartes wasn't really messy and maybe he didn't really fall into the sun, or dry lines on his ceiling. But even if nobody knows exactly how he did it, it is a fact, historical fact, that René Descartes made the Cartesian coordinate system very popular, and he was a darn good philosopher, too. You can use the Cartesian coordinate system to make a map of your city where you can plot points to show where things are, but you can use it for other things. Let's say there are two young children, uh, Valerie and Angelo, and they both like PB&Js. But Valerie, she likes her peanut butter really creamy, and she likes her grapes in jelly. Let's say her brother Angelo likes peanut butter really crunchy and likes his grape spread thick jam. The yellow dot is where Angelo can plot on a Cartesian coordinate graph the kind of PB&J he likes. And the red dot is where Valerie can plot the kind of PB&J she likes, creamy peanut butter with grape jelly 
Angelo Coors likes crunchy peanut butter with grape jam. High school students and college students and grown-ups still use the ideas from René Descartes, including his geometry and his Cartesian coordinates. And if you want to follow that URL on the screen, you can find an interactive activity for you to practice making coordinate points. Here's a quick look at how grown-ups or college students or high school students might learn about Cartesian coordinates. And all of that is what we learned from The Fly in the Ceiling, a math myth by Dr. Julie Glass with illustrations by Richard Waltz.